Now back to that braingasm. This is the brain on DMT, the most powerful hallucinogenic known to man. Let's talk about braingasm. DMT is a powerful psychedelic, and it is produced in the brain, but scientists don't really know why. Most neuroscientists don't really talk about this, but let's do it. So she says you can have a braingasm by activating the pineal gland because that's where DMT is produced. It is true that the enzyme which produces DMT has been detected in the human pineal gland, but it's also detected elsewhere in the brain. And scientists have found that when they remove the pineal gland from rats, they still detect DMT at the same level, so there must be other sources. But why is DMT there? Generally, in biology and neuroscience, if something is there, then it probably does something. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. So does DMT allow us to hallucinate naturally? Perhaps it triggers altered states of consciousness, like dreaming. We're still figuring that out, but let me show you something. This is psilocin, the active compound in psychedelic mushrooms. And you may notice it's very similar to serotonin. Well, in fact, psilocin binds to and activates serotonin receptors in the brain. So if activating serotonin receptors causes a psychedelic experience, then why doesn't the natural serotonin in our brains make us hallucinate? Maybe we're always hallucinating to some level, but more likely, psychedelic mushrooms activate those receptors at levels that we would call supraphysiological, meaning greater than what normally occurs in the brain. And that changes your sensation and perception. So just because DMT causes hallucinations when you take it as a drug doesn't mean that it exists in the brain to cause hallucinations, just like serotonin doesn't. DMT probably does several things in the brain, and we will figure it out. But before you swipe away, I want everyone to know that it is very possible to believe in spirituality and trust real neuroscience. Just because I'm saying this isn't true doesn't mean that there aren't other real explanations for spirituality, and I want to talk about those. I've already promised a series on psychedelics in the brain, and that's what's coming next, so follow to join the conversation.